guys. This is Mr. J. Welcome to another episode of Fanboy Junction. Today, even though I'm a little late, we're going to be reviewing X-Men Days of Future Past. Uh, you'll probably notice that this review is going to be a little bit different format than what I've done in the past. going to try and make it more concise, do a little bit more fun stuff. So, with that being said, here we go. X-Men Days of Future Past is based on the graphic novel or two-issue story arc from X-Men comic book called Days of Future Past. What a coincidence. Um, unlike the previous X-Men movies, or even the Wolverine movies, if you want to include them in that, is that X-Men 1, X-Men 2, X-Men 3, though they kind of pulled elements from some of the X-Men storylines, there was just a touch you know x-men 2 kind of was god love man kills which dealt with you know going after mutants and detecting them and all that kind of stuff so and and also included some of the weapon x stuff so that was kind of neat or with x-men 3 which is a horrible movie they dealt with the the storyline where they found a cure for the mutant um gene or whatever and, but the first X-Men, no touch of any kind of X-Men storyline. So I've always liked that. I really, as much as I like seeing the elements of stories or elements of the comic book graphic novels, to me, being a fan, and I know that you know I'm very small percentile of people watching the movies, it makes them predictable. Uh, something like The Dark Knight Rises. Reading so much of the Batman comics and the graphic novels, just watching the trailers, I knew exactly what that entire movie was going to play out. I mean, literally beat for beat. Very few surprises. That was the case with this movie. Um, they changed a lot of the players. Magneto was not in the, the storyline at all in the comics. It was not Wolverine they sent back. It was Kitty Pride. So there's a lot of differences. And but the main story arc was the same and because of that i kind of felt like eh, i read this already uh you know like i said i don't like the direct translation but there was enough there i appreciated it uh the whole wolverine thing let's not say I, I, let me say this wolverine is the most popular character in the whole franchise y you gotta have him in there i understand that so they were albeit very creative way of making him being the one to be sent back make sense. I was kind of let down by that. Um, I just kind of felt like there there wasn't a need for it to be him besides they wanted to have Wolverine in the story. You still could have had Wolverine in the story. You still could have had that the future was much farther into the future and that he goes back to maybe the time of the first X-Men movie and enters, you know, and as far as the timeline. Because in the comic, and again, I guess it's harder to explain, but in the comic book, the whole reason why Kitty Pride was sent back is because her character was so young that she had not built up the telepathic blocks that the other members of the X-Men had. So she was the one that had to go back because so she, she had actually invade her, old, her younger self. In this movie, they kind of use this whole thing of, well, because of his healing factor, he can survive the transfer back. Uh, why not? I mean, again, interesting way to make sure it was Wolverine to go back. I was a big fan of it. Uh, I, 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 you know, whatever. But given that they did kind of do source material and kind of follow it, there were a lot of I mean, keeping Mystique, as much as people want to say, well, Mystique was only in there because uh, Jennifer Girl, who's hot right now, they wanted to put her in the movie. Well, actually, no. In the Days of Future Past comic book, she was the main villain. She was the leader of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So it made sense that she was there. Now, she didn't do the whole pseudo good guy thing at the end, but she was in there. So I, there was some of that I liked. But, yeah, as it got more closer to the end, it just kind of got to the point of, like, yeah, there's no surprises here. Um, Wolverine, Hugh Jackman, looked perfect. He did a really good job in the movie. I liked the performances, but story-wise, I just kind of felt like, eh, it, it was okay. 
the costume in this film is where I feel it really kind of goes blah. Um, I mean, obviously, Professor X never really has a costume. Wolverine only has a costume in the future. He doesn't wear a costume in the past. Um, but, like, the Magneto costume with the chest plate and all this kind of stuff, I, it to me, it just kind of looked ridiculous. Um, then the costumes they had in the future... I, 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 why does Wolverine need armor if he heals? I mean, it just kind of was like the whole black this and black that. And I, I'm really tired of films defaulting to black and pads makes a costume really cool. You know, even with the Dark Knight, I know, I'm sorry, I keep going back to Batman, but even with the Dark Knight Rises and Dark Knight, the costume, like you default to this kind of all black pads or all black armor. Um, you know, as much as in first class the costumes look really ridiculous, you don't have to go that far. But give me something more on the comic. I think I think we're at the point now in comic book movies where you can go ahead and do more close to a comic book costume than just black and pads or dark and pads. I mean, you know, yeah, Captain America's costume in Avengers was borderline kind of eh, but they were willing to give him the costume with the blue and the white. So I think that with this, with this, I was very let down by the costumes. I really didn't feel like they did anything for the movie. In fact, they kind of were distracting for me. Um, so that's kind of how I, I, I saw the costumes. Uh, honestly, to me, the action in this movie is kind of non-existent, unless it's Mystique. Mystique's really the only person that does any kind of action. Now, when I say action, I mean action, okay? Magneto going like this, and carrying a bunch of things all across the city, and then putting it back down. That's not action. It's cool. I liked it. I really like the way they use Magneto's powers in pretty much all the movies. I thought that was neat. It was a good, you know, whatever. But other than that, you know, there's a brief little bit with Wolverine in the beginning. Other than that, there there really isn't anything that goes on. Um, it's a lot of the slow burn and leading to the end. But for the most part, the you know, they had the really cool scene. I, I'll give it to you. The really cool action scene with Quicksilver definitely stole the show um, for the entire movie. It makes me wonder what they're going to do with the Quicksilver and Avengers to either try and top it or do something completely different. That was probably the surprise of the movie was was him and that action scene. But other than that, there really wasn't a lot of action in the movie. It was a lot of talking and I'm not saying you've got to have action-packed stuff, but ultimately, Wolverine does nothing in the movie. He talks and talks a lot of curse words and makes fun of people but doesn't really do anything. And ultimately, you know, it's a spoiler in a way, but ultimately he does nothing besides talk to actually influence the outcome of the movie. He doesn't take anybody out. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't stop anybody. He just gets kind of, and that's it. He's, he's pretty worthless in the movie when it comes to the action. So for that, the action's kind of eh. Really, honestly, I did like, like I said before, with the, the, the source material. I liked kind of some of what they took from the, the source material, from the, the comics. Um, the acting and performances in this movie were great. Um, it was great to see the two Charles Xavier's talking. Ian McKellen, though, his part was kind of small. Always great. Um, I liked that. And again, I kind of have to, I have to say spoil alert, and I'll make sure it's spoiled. I liked that. As I said, I, don't, I think I said it in one of my previous episodes of the show, but I've been saying it for a while. They did a perfect job of soft rebooting this franchise. Now they can go forward and everybody's back. They can do what they want. They don't have to worry about the crazy X-Men 3 stuff or the X-Men, the Wolverine origin stuff. You now have Wolverine. Everybody's back. And maybe, just maybe, I'll get my Cyclops being actually cool because he's one of my favorite X-Men. So I really like that they wrapped it up so that now the next movie can be awesome. Um, again, acting was solid. Fastbender is amazing. I dare say he's probably the second best actor in the movie, or the second best performance in the movie. Again, Quicksilver really surprised me. I, I was not looking forward to seeing him in this movie. He, he pretty much stole the show. 
Hugh Jackman always is excellent as Wolverine. He doesn't have a lot to do besides talk and smack to everybody, but he is, his performance was on par with what he's been doing. He just keeps getting better and better and better. It's a shame we're probably going to get two more movies out of him. We'd love to see him playing this role, but he's already... 45's not old, but when you go only do these movies every two years, three years... I mean, you're talking about the third movie is going to be would be ten years from now. It puts him in his fifties, and it, unlike something like Iron Man or some of these other roles, I mean, this is a very physical role for him. But um, love to see him come back. So uh, the performances all around were really good, and that was probably the best part of this movie was the acting. Um, if you go into this movie not expecting a big action movie, you go into it expecting a very intense story. It's de- it's definitely what you want to. You're going to get something out of that. The Again, like I said before with the source material, um, it was almost too much from the comic, and I, I, I knew what was going on. Um, <clears throat> the costuming was kind of blah. There wasn't really a lot of action. Okay, I'm going to admit it. I'm there to see Wolverine. I want to see Wolverine. One of the best moments in all comic book movies, X-Men 2, Wolverine goes berserk and just starts taking out so- soldiers left and right. There is not that moment in this movie. I mean, literally, Wolverine does pretty much nothing in the movie. Which makes me wonder, why is he in the movie? You only have him in the movie because you want Hugh Jackman and Wolverine in the movie. You might as well just have to be Kitty Pride and let her do everything he did. He, he influenced nothing. For that, I kind of... I got I got a thumbs down that kind of thing. Um, again, the, I the costumes. Um, other than that, that's probably the, pretty much mainly the bad. The movie is what the X-Men franchise needed to get back in a game. Um, the Wolverine, though a really good movie, doesn't really bring anything as far as the rest of the team is concerned. First Class, I didn't particularly care for it. I know a lot of people liked it. I thought it was kind of blah. Um, X-Men, or- or X-Men Origins Wolverine was god-awful. X-Men 3 was horrible. X-Men 1 and 2. This is what the, the X-Men 3 could have been. I would almost dare say, watch X-Men 1, 2, and this. Don't even bother. Maybe watch the Wolverine and just, you know, know that they tell you enough in that story to know what happens at the end of X-Men 3. But, yeah, it was it was what this franchise needed. The franchise has now been, you know, kind of revitalized. It, it's corrected some of its continuity errors. And now you've got your team back. Now, whether they're going to go forward the next movie and use the old team or the, the younger team is, you know, we'll have to see. They keep saying it's going to be a mix, which is what I'm hoping for. Um, but this movie is really what this film f- franchise needed. It is now back. In the world where comic book movies are among the top grossing films of the year, when movies like, you know, Captain America 2, The Avengers... The Dark Knight. This is now what this X Men franchise needed. It needs to be back, being great. So this was really solid. I'm psyched for the next one, but I will say that this movie did not end up in my top ten. Um, it's due to some of the things I've already mentioned, uh, it just wasn't completely there for me. But again, now what this film is that is psyched me up for the next film, and that's where I think it's going to be. X Men's just completely back. Um, <clears throat> so that's it what I want you guys to do check this out let me know if you like this kind of review that I'm doing if you have a movie either recent or a movie from the past you want to see me review in this fashion let me know and I will do it again it doesn't have to be recent heck if you want me to do Beverly Hills Cop I'll do Beverly Hills Cop you want me to do The Shadow you want me to go back to X-Men 1 you want me to do Batman Michael Keaton, you want me to do Batman Val Kilmer, anything. You want me to just do Big Trouble in Little China? Why not? Let me know. Comment below. Thanks, guys, for watching, and we will see you, or I will see you next time. Maybe, just maybe, we'll get DeMarcus in here again. Let me know if you like having him here. My wife still has not come back. She says that if five people want her to be in the show and comment, she will come and be on the show and do her rant about Channing Tatum being Gambit. Anyway, again, thanks for watching, guys. Take care.